Welcome all you wrestling fans and a big 2019 shout out to everyone in the Munson Mafia. As always, I am the video guy, the commentator, the show host, the creator of Bobby Fit, and the only person in history to give Los Rudos the slip, not once, but twice. Yes, I am Bobby Munson, and I want to welcome you to Ring Respect Radio. Damn. It has been quite a while since I did an edition of Ring Respect Radio. We've been doing a lot more lately with Ring Respect Retro uh, with my colleague Papa Smoke. So hopefully you guys have been checking that show out. And if you haven't, make sure to go on down into the channel and check that show out as well too. As you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling has just wrapped up Wrestle Kingdom for the year. One of the biggest wrestling shows in the entire universe. That's right. And it just happened, and I'm going to come at you with a review. It's been a long time since I've done a review on the channel, so this is going to be a little bit extensive. Watched it in full just recently. I want to give you guys my lowdown on it and bring up a few wrestling topics while I'm at it as well. But before we get started with the review and the show, I want to get you guys to go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. It's right down there. Just give it a quick click. It helps me out. Helps out the channel too. And then I want you to go after that and click that little bell down there. That is the notification bell. If you click that little bell, then you will be notified every single time we release new material right here on Ring Respect Radio. And also anytime we release new episodes of Ring Respect Retro as well. So you go ahead and take just a quick moment to do that. It'd be much appreciated and definitely helps out on the channel. So let's get down to it. New Japan Pro Wrestling, they present Wrestle Kingdom. And what a card it was. A lot of great talents on this particular card. And I just want to get right down into it and let you know what my thoughts were on the entire show. We started the night off. is Will Osprey versus Kota Ibushi, a match I was very excited about. Love the work of these two individuals. In particular, Ibushi, very big fan of his body of work as well, too. Um, then watching the match, you know, I, I noticed that uh, Ke Kevin Kelly and Don Callis brought up about Osprey's neck injury. And I mean, Osprey's not, you know, very old or anything like that. So it made me start to think about the high impact and the high expectations that fans of wrestling are putting on today's wrestling. Is it a little bit too much? I mean, are these guys going out there and putting on too risky a show just to satisfy the ever-changing expectations of the wrestling community itself? It's a good question for debate, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. So if you go ahead, give me a comment in the comment section below. Be interesting to hear what you guys think. Are wrestlers going a little too over and above for our entertainment at this time and risking their bodies a little too much? Anyway, there's a lot of nice things that was in this match. Uh, that uh, series of counters that were kind of in the middle of the match that led to the Spanish fly move. Really, really loved that. Uh, you had your top rope double stomp from Abushi to Osprey. Uh, off the top rope there, absolutely remarkable. Uh, then you had uh, another counter uh, into the ring with the roll through from Osprey. Uh, that was a thing of absolute beauty as well too. And then the pile driver from Ibushi feels like a spot that should have ended the match. I mean, you know, a lot of people do complain about the multitude of uh, false finishes that we get in wrestling today and stuff like that. I'm not going to go and complain about that personally. Um, it's fine to a degree and you know I come from an older school of watching and stuff like that where that wouldn't have happened. It just seemed like that move just being as sick as it was is kind of move you'd expect to finish a match like that. But no, needless to say the match did go on uh, and then Osprey ended up taking the win. Uh, he ends up uh, becoming the new never open weight champion. So, you know, a solid way to open up this year's Wrestle Kingdom. And congratulations to Will Osprey on becoming the new never open heavyweight champion. Uh, up next, triple threat tag team matchup. And this one, uh, you know, again, you're going to have to bear with me on some of the pronunciations. I'm not that good at them. I try my best to listen, but uh, we got Los. In Gob or not, not uh, please correct me on the pronunciation of that one. I, I'd really like to know. Uh, it was versus Arangi 3K, and then also the team of El Desperado and Yoshinobu. Uh, you know, and I hear the term sneaky style that got brought up on commentary during this match, and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, who else do I know that are masters of sneaky style? Oh, that's right. Look at you, Los Rudos, and how you perfected. Sneaky stuff. 
sneak attacks, sneaky antics, sneaky attitudes. Anyways, Asasino, Dice Steel. I hope you boys enjoyed your holiday season, and I hope you're also enjoying your absolutely perfect permanent vacation from the Squared Circle, because it's what you guys deserve all year. Guess I won't be seeing the two of you on January 25th at the Cosmo Hall in Saskatoon for another rendition of Wild Side Wrestling, but I myself will be there along with all your favorites, so if you're in the Saskatoon area, Friday night, January 25th. Check it out. Tickets at www.hiwcanada.com. Make sure to get those as well. So yes, yeah, just a little off target there with uh, the actual match itself. So sorry about that, folks. Throwing in a little bit of my own personality in on that one. But this match, it was very excellent, high speed, high pace matchup. Uh, really, you know, get things kicked off. Really get the you know momentum of the crowd behind it and everything. I uh, did feel like the match ended up being a little bit too short, like I kind of wanted to see more from these three teams as they got in there. I mean, it was just go, go, go right from the opening bell, which can be a lot of fun, but I, I feel like there could have been more and that we could have got a little bit stronger matchup overall if we would have had a little bit more time. But I mean, with a, such a packed card, of course, there's going to be one or two matches that maybe don't get the time they need to really flesh themselves out. Still, Good match overall. Uh, finish came in a blink of an eye, and we were given new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion in Los Ingobernables. Up next, we have a match between Zack Sabre Jr. and Tomohiro Ishii. Interesting to hear that the current British Heavyweight Championship that was being held by Tomohiro will be retired after that particular matchup, uh, replaced by a totally new heavyweight championship design and then the championship that was being retired is going to be on in on display in a museum in Portsmouth I have family in Portsmouth that's kind of where my a lot of my roots come from so you know props to the city of Portsmouth for getting to be able to see that title go Pompey anyways I really really enjoy the strong mat work from wrestlers especially submission specialists it's really enjoyable to watch at Zack Sabre Jr really puts on an excellent show when it comes to the submission game of all things. Tomo Hero's knife edge chop to the throw. Oh man, that made me cringe. Ow, that had to hurt. Man, he throws a wall with that damn thing. And the double octopus was fan fantastic and a great way for this match to come to a finish. This was a match that I personally really enjoyed. It really stood out for me. Really enjoyed the work of both these two men. Zack Sabre Jr. wins and becomes the new British Heavyweight Champion. And that new belt looks absolutely beautiful. What a great looking title belt that is. Moving on next, we had a match between the Young Bucks as they took on Evil and Sonata and then also the Gorillas of Destiny, Toma Tonga and Tonga Lau. Oh, you know, while we're at it, you know, the Young Bucks are on this match. Let's bring it up. All Elite Wrestling was announced this week, which is absolutely excellent news for the wrestling industry. I'm happy for absolutely everybody involved and wish them all the best. And I look forward to being able to watch the product as well. So props to you guys for All Elite Wrestling. Uh, Toma Tonga being the good guy in this matchup, he just uh, talked about this recently, came out said he wanted to be the good guy. It ended up being one of the most entertaining parts of the match, not that there wasn't entertainment in the wrestling itself, but it was actually quite an enjoyable thing, it gave a little bit more character than what we may have got otherwise. I, I really enjoyed that part of it, I thought it was a lot of fun there. Uh, so. The outside exchange of counters between the Bucks and Sonata. Oh my goodness, man. What a lot of athleticism that would have taken to be able to do that. I mean, I think I was running out of breath just watching the damn thing. Then, uh, that Tower of Doom pulled by the 450 splash. Wow, what a highlight moment that one was. Evil and Sonata pick up the win and become the new IWGP Tag Team Champions. What a great matchup it was. Up next, we've got Juice Robinson, and he's taking on the American Nightmare. Yes, he is, Cody. And what a long way Juice Robinson has come. I mean, 
once the opening act on NXT to now wrestling Cody at one of the largest events in the entire industry, which they did lock up before previously, uh, a couple of years ago on the same platform, but you know, Cody was just getting over onto the indies, Juice wasn't at the status that he is currently now, the two of them have really picked up their games in that amount of time, so what a treat we were in for with this one. You know, and thinking of all the things Cody's done in the last few years in wrestling, I mean, you just know one day he's going to be remembered as a trailblazer in this industry, who did it his own way. Still, at this point, Cody versus all this, I have to say, was one of my absolute favorite matches of 2018, or even just uh, both encounters between the two of them. I really like the style that they worked, really enjoyed the work by both guys. I'm a huge Cody fan, what can I say? He's, he's an excellent in-ring performer, like what he does. Looking forward to seeing what 2019 holds for him. Anyways, uh, there was a lot of back and forth between these two, a lot of using each other's finishers as well too. Juice actually kicked out of Crossroads, and he kicked out of Pulp Friction, which Cody also delivered to him as well. Uh, in the end though, that finish, oh my goodness, what a perfect finish this match. Juice Robinson hits the two left hands of God in a row. Then he goes on to hit Pulp Friction, not once, but twice, folks. He made sure Cody was going to be down for the count. Juice Robinson ends up taking the win and becomes the brand new U.S. champion. What a great matchup that was. Really enjoyed that one. Um, Cody, Juice Robinson, hats off to you. One of the best matches of the night, hands down. Um, next up, we had Ishimori versus Kushida. Uh, that entered from Kushida, the Back to the Future references, absolutely loved it. Thought it was fun, good way to, you know, pick up the entertainment value of Wrestle Kingdom. I mean, it's always a great wrestling show, but, you know, throw some entertainment in it, it really spices things up. So a nice touch to that one in particular. Uh, nice exchange of counter moves in this one as well, too. Um, I love the use of throwing the legs up on top of the referee's shoulder before throwing that enormous kick. Boom! That was a great move. I loved it. Um, so Ishimori ends up capturing the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Again, one of these matches that kind of, you know, it it didn't have the same kind of, you know, feel that some of the other matches did. I think maybe due to a lack of time, again, with a very packed card. Really hard to move forward with that one. So, you know, both competitors did a great job. Great uh, way to really pick up some uh, steam for Ishimori and a great uh, new championship to put around his waist as well, too. Up next, a match between Switchblade, Jay White, and Okada. In a night where every single match so far has had a championship, and every match but this particular match is a title match. Also, every title has changed hands throughout the entire night. And to think, Okada not involved in a title match? Well, that's okay, because we were treated to quite a delight in this one between Jay White and Okada. Okada is one of these performers, I mean, he is once in a lifetime, he gets in there, the crowd is eating out of the palm of his hands, everything he does, they're just watching it all, and they love this guy, and why not, the Rainmaker knows how to rank it rain, and he definitely deserves what the accolades that he gets from the fans in every single show. Uh, there was that outside distraction with the chair being introduced, um, kind of took the excitement level of this match just up that extra pace that I really enjoyed. Uh, there was a nice build, really nice pacing in this particular one, which really helps make it stand out from some of the other matches that were a really fast paced sort of thing. This one did a little bit of a slow build, working its way up into the, you know, the faster stuff as it went along and really took it to a level that was exciting, fun to watch. I really liked it. And Jay White reverses that second Rainmaker that Okada went for in the end, ends up taking the matchup. So a big win for the Switchblade Jay White on this one, and what a future this young man has ahead of him. Really looking forward to seeing what we see from him next. Moving on from there, we have got Nato versus Chris Jericho. No DQ match. And first of all, Chris Jericho got to be one of the hardest working individuals in the entire industry. Uh, it's been memorable no matter where he went in the world. What the company he worked for, always a delight to watch. One of my favorites in the ring, and also his Bam Fozzy, fantastic. Uh, match starts off really quick. Uh, Nato attacking Jericho from behind in this no DQ matchup. Uh, Kendo stick shots, absolutely sick looking in this matchup. And then Jericho, given that good old Canadian salute when he grabs the camera, Jericho, for one night only, I'm gonna dub you, sir, the video game. 
Then, and, wow, I couldn't believe what NATO spit in Jericho's face. That was something else, too. Uh, NATO survives two walls, breaks free from them, and then uh, also gets out of the code breaker as well, too. And in the end, NATO ends up picking up the win, and what an incredible matchup this was. Um, that DDT on the chair that NATO did, and then hits Chris Jericho with the code breaker. It just, oh man, the build-up was great. Great finish, NATO picking up the win. Fantastic win, fantastic match as well. NATO, the new Intercontinental Champion of New Japan Pro Wrestling. And our main event, Tanahashi versus Kenny Omega for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship match. Excellent back and forth from both competitors. Uh, slammed to the table on the outside, and then the moonsault off the guardrail was absolutely fantastic as well, too. You know, I love the apron sling blade spot that they did. Uh, then that, uh, you know, uh, Tanahashi going through the table on the outside. Ooh, oh my god, that looked like it hurt quite a bit. And then uh, that top rope move with Tanahashi hitting face first was absolutely superb as well too. Man, I liked this match quite a lot. Tanahashi picking up the victory and becoming the new IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Solid match overall. Uh, my favorite match of the F's that I, I have to say would be Chris Jericho versus NATO for me. Uh, but this one right up there too. I mean, there was a lot of great things about Wrestle Kingdom. Loved it the whole night. Great night of wrestling. Great night for us wrestling fans as well too. Uh, so yes, uh, absolutely wonderful. And I want to ask you guys now, do you think that there was any early contenders to talk about for 2019's match of the year already? And what are you looking forward to going for as well. I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you thought of Wrestle Kingdom. Let me know anything you want to talk about wrestling related in the comment section below. I want to thank you very much for tuning in and helping out here at Ring Respect Radio. Couldn't do that without all of you tuning in each and every week.